In this video, I'm making chicken cacciatore. I'm going to start off by chopping up these baby bell peppers. Notice I don't have any green ones in there. I also have a few rainbow carrots, an onion, a couple of stalks of celery, and some dried porcini mushrooms. And don't worry, I will give a list of all of the ingredients in the description. I also have some nice fresh mushrooms. I'm probably going to use like a half a pound or so of those, along with these Campari tomatoes, which I'm going to remove the stem from as well as the seeds. I also have a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And if you don't have tomatoes, like if they're not in season, you can just use two cans of the diced. Here I have some dried sage along with some dried oregano. And for me, this dish, I like it to have like more sage than oregano because the sage has a nice foresty flavor for me. A little bit of fresh parsley is also going to be going in there. Here I have a bit of olive oil, probably three tablespoons, and I have put some garlic cloves in there. I have this on a very low heat. You can see my little bubbles, and what I'm doing here is infusing my oil with a nice garlicky flavor. So I'm going to leave that over here to go ahead and infuse, and I'm going to go over here and season my chicken. I'm using chicken thighs for this dish and I'm seasoning them with kosher salt to start off. Kosher salt is great for seasoning meat because not only does it have a nice large air space in it, but it also has jagged edges that allow it to hold onto the meat as it's melting. And those nice little air spaces that are in the kosher salt allow you to put a nice little layer on top of your meat. Like you can kind of put a thick layer of the kosher salt on there without over seasoning it and making it way, way too salty. So once I get my little layer of salt on top of my chicken, I'm going to add it into the pan and I'm going to remove my garlic cloves. I've also turned my heat onto high at this point. I'm only going to put three of my pieces of chicken in here at a time because I don't want the chicken to steam. What I'm trying to do here is to get a really nice sear on the breast. So if you have your pan overcrowded, what ends up happening is the juices come out of the chicken and then you have a steaming situation going on. And you can't really get caramelization when there's water you know, in, there, in your pan. So to get that nice caramelization, I'm doing two batches. And these were only in here probably like three minutes on the first side and maybe two minutes on the second side. I went ahead obviously and took them out and now I'm doing the second round of the chicken. I'm just doing the same same thing, I want to get a nice sear on the skin side, and also when they were in the pan, I did season the back side of them. I'm adding my onions, which I showed you earlier. It's just that one onion. I diced it up, and I'm adding it directly into the pan. It has all of those little brown bits from the chicken, and that is just fine. I've also added in just a little pinch of kosher salt to go in there with my onions. You'll notice as I'm cooking that I add a little pinch of salt after almost every ingredient. That's because it lets each ingredient have an opportunity to get evenly seasoned and to soak up a little bit of salt. If you add the salt at the very, very end, it doesn't let the starch that's in your different vegetables soak up the salt as they're cooking. You'll get a much more consistent result and a more even seasoning if you do it as you go instead of waiting until the very end. The next thing that I'm adding in is all of those vegetables that I chopped up. So I have the carrots, the rainbow carrots is what I use, but of course you can use just regular orange carrots. I also added in the celery, the bell peppers, and my Campari tomatoes. I'm not adding in my canned diced tomatoes at this time because it would be too much liquid. Here again, I'm adding in just a pinch. It's not a lot of salt, just a little pinch of salt to go on top of those vegetables. Again, just to allow them to have a nice even seasoning and to absorb the salt the way that they want to. I'm going to let this cook on medium high heat until my pan comes to what's called au sec, which just means almost dry. So if you look, you can see that there's not much liquid left in my pan. So this is what I'm going to add in my wine. Generally for this recipe, people are going to add like one cup of wine. I really like the flavor of wine. So I'm adding a cup and a half into mine, but you can kind of make adjustments to your own taste as far as that goes. I also chose to use a dry white wine instead of a red. Again, that's totally a preference and it's up to you. Because it's chicken, I like to use the white wine. Although I should point out that there are a few chicken dishes where I might choose to use red. Anyway, moving right along, I added in those fresh mushrooms along with a little bit more kosher salt. Again, just a little pinch. And I'm going to stir those in and let it cook down until it's looking like this. Just for a couple of minutes. 
Next, I'm adding in my chicken stock, and I'm going to add in two cups at first and give it a little stir, and then kind of just take a look at it and decide, you know, depending on how much juice the vegetables released, if I need another cup. So I did decide to go ahead and add in a third cup of chicken stock, and then I added in my dried porcini mushrooms. These are going to add such a beautiful, earthy, deep mushroom flavor into this dish. If you can get them, make sure that you do. I know that they're not available at like every supermarket, but you can get them on Amazon. So moving right along, I just added in my can of diced tomatoes, and that was a 14 ounce can. And I'm also going to add in just like a tablespoon and a half or so of fresh parsley along with my sage. And I'm also going to add my oregano in there. I'm going to put my chicken right in, and what's important here is that our chicken is getting covered by about three quarters. So just kind of snuggle the meat down in there until it's covered about three quarters of the way, and this is going to cook for about 45 minutes, and you just want it to simmer. Mine's actually bubbling a little more than I want, so I am going to lower the heat, and I'm also adding in about a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. You can add more or less depending on how hot you want the dish to be. And this is what it looks like about 45 minutes later. The chicken is absolutely beautiful and tender. We have this gorgeous, gorgeous sauce kind of soup situation going on. And as you can see, I have a nice loaf of crusty bread that we're going to use to soak that up. You could also serve this with polenta if you wanted to. It'd be absolutely delicious. I'm going to serve it by putting some of the vegetables and the sauce down in the bottom and then the chicken on top. You could also garnish this with some fresh herbs if you wanted to, the parsley or sage or oregano, and it is ready to serve. Backbiteforever.com